Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Paleo 101 where we talk about fossils, minerals, and everything recorded in the Earth's rocks. Well, I am back from my trip collecting fossils and uh, let me tell you something, it was a wonderful trip out there. Five days collecting fossils, actually four days collecting fossils, but let's get into some of the various specimens and the various trips that I took on the 6th, 7th, 8th, and 9th of August. Well, on the 6th of August we went to Birmingham, we went to the Birmingham Paleontological um, Society, I believe is the name, and um, we had a great time. I finally got to meet Dr. Brad DeLine, who is an iconoderm paleontologist who specializes in crinoids. He talked about the coiling of anal tubes and crinoids. It was a very interesting trip, and I learned a lot of new things. A lot of things that I didn't even know crinoids could even do. They're some of the weirdest animals that ever lived on Earth, and they still live today in the um, tropical oceans, but there's only one group that survived um, the extinctions throughout Earth's history, and that was quite a uh, very, uh, very unique to really understand and to learn about. Um, afterwards, we went behind a gas station. <laughs> Literally, it was behind a gas station, and we started collecting fossils from an exposed um, formation known as the Pottsville Formation, which dates back to the Pennsylvanian period of the Carboniferous, and this is West Apalian Estate, which was about 310 million years old. Um, we started searching for fossils. We actually came across a coal seam which that was exposed and it was very cool, shiny coal seam. But above the coal seam we actually found, and above and below the coal seam we actually found some various plant fossils like Calamites, and I actually found a beautiful preserved Lepidodendron impression, which is a large scale tree that lived during the Carboniferous period um, about 310 million years ago. And this is the impression of the Lepidodendron um, impression. So that's really cool. If you can see that, they almost look like tire tracks but that is the coal in, uh, imprint of the Lepidodendron. Very, very cool. Um, so yeah, we that was the first trip we went on um, to collect fossils. This was at least seven o'clock or nine o'clock at night, and we actually just went in the back of a um, in the back of a gas station. And we just started collecting plant fossils, and that was the special one I found. Um, so that was really cool to look at. On the seventh, we went to the Fort Payne Formation which is the Mississippian in age, which is about 325 million years old, roughly about 325 million years old. And we found lots in crinoids today. Uh, that On the 7th, we actually collected lots and lots of crinoid stems and calyxes and all those kinds of things. And I found a lot of specimens. It was all day going to various locations on the 7th, looking at the Fort Payne Formation. And we collected some, I collected some crinoidal limestone. Here's an example of it over here. This is a piece of crinoidal limestone, and you can see the different pieces of, um, crin of crinoids. And if you don't know what crinoids look like, they look like this. So that's an example, and they, and they disarticulated. Um, so as the, uh, as the animal died, their skeletons or their stems started to fall apart, and this is what makes up um, this rock. It's known as crinoidal limestone. So I found lots of that, but I also found some different things in the Fort Payne Formation. It was pretty cool looking. Um, as I told you on the 6th, I went to a lecture that talked about um, crinoid, um, uh, I think crinoid stems and, uh, and crinoid anal sacs. I actually found a crinoid anal sac. So that spiky little object that you see here is actual crinoid anal, crinoid anal sac that I found. And I found about probably three of them. And so... Here is a, an example of a crinoid anal sac. What you're looking at is here is the the anal tube or the anal tube uh, the anal tube right here. So not anal sac, anal tube. I meant to say. So that was really unique. It had all kind of spikes on it that was probably used for protection purposes. So uh, think about if you're opening up a crinoid, you're actually seeing the inside of that. That's known as the anal tube. So it was really cool to find that. I've never found anything like that before, and I'm I'm pretty gl glad and happy that I found something like that. That's, those kinds of things are quite rare to find. Um, and you wouldn't really know what they were in, until you actually did some research on them and actually knew about a little bit about the anatomy of a crinoid. I also found some really unique fossils too, some really unique looking crinoids. This is a piece of crinoidal limestone and it has these oval-like ossicles. Um, this is called platycrinides. Um, this actually is what we call the twisted crinoid because its stem is actually twisted. That was probably for um, water flow of the animal. And so its stem, if you looked at it this way, its stem was actually twisted. So it was really unique and it had these oval ossicles. So this is the first time I've actually found things like this. And these 
are the platycrinides um, ossicles that were disarticulated. And so this is a beautiful piece that I came across. I eyed it right as I opened up the car to go and collect. This was sitting there right outside waiting for me. And I found that and it was pretty, it was really cool. And so, yep, those are the ossicles of the platycrinides stems. Really cool looking fossils. We found um, lots and lots of crinoid stems. We found this. This is a huge crinoid stem. Look how big that thing is. That's quite large, quite large crinoid. And so on the 7th, it was all day collecting Fort Payne material. On the, um, on the 8th, we actually went out and collected a few things from the um, Montego limestone formations, which is roughly about 325, 324 million years old from the Mississippian period of the Carboniferous. And we found all kinds of fossils. We found, we had to cut the, um, sh the trip short because there were thunderstorm and lightning. So, but at least we were able to go and collect a few fossils. But on that day, we actually found a few blastoids, which are things like this. So this is the theca or the calyx of a blastoid. If you don't know what a blastoid looks like, it looks like this. So what you're looking at and what I found were these things. This is the upper part of the of the uh, blastoid, and they have this small like like stem. And I've actually seen complete specimens of these from uh, uh, from a fossil collection that I was able to look at over the weekend from Gabe Ward. So I went out collecting with Jess Cost and Gabe Ward, who are um, some fossil collectors just like I am. And we went out and went out and collect fossils from the Brownsport Group and the Fort Payne and the Montego. So on the 8th, we actually went out to the Montego and collected um, little piece, bits and pieces of crinoid stems and um, blastoids. And I actually found this as well. This is a bryrozoan. This is known as Archimedes. So it kind of looks like a spine, but it's not. It's an invertebrate animal. And it looks like this when, it's a, when it was alive. That's what it would look like. So this is the axis. This is the... Um, the, uh, the axis of the Archimedes bryrozoan, and so it would have been filled up with lacy bryrozoans, just like the image that you see here. It looked like this when it was alive. So on the 8th, yeah, we went to the Montego limestone formations, collected a few specimens, and we had to head out because it was thundering and lightning that day, and so we had to cut the, we had to cut the trip short. But on the 9th, it was a really, really productive trip, because that's when we went to the Brownsport group. Um, we actually went out to an Ordovician outcrop before we went to the Brownsport. So the Brownsport group is a is a um, is a rock unit that dates back during the Silurian period, which is about three uh, four hundred twenty-five million years old. And so we found various fossils like crinoid stem, crinoid ossicles, cystoids, trilobites, and other thing and other fossils coming from those particular outcrops and formations. And so we stopped at an Ordovician outcrop first um, from Tennessee. This is when we were going to Tennessee. The other fossils I showed you are from um, the Alabama part of Huntsville and other places, but we also went to Tennessee as well to go and collect fossils from the Brownsport group. And this is what I found. This is from a um, the first outcrop we went to. This is not the Brownsport group. This is a um, unidentified formation, but um, this is a Faber-Sites coral. If you can actually see there, so you can see the the uh, polyps there. That is Faber-Sites coral. This dates back from the Ordovician period. Um, somewhere between uh, 400 million years old. So that's a really neat fossil that I found. I found some other fossils at that outcrop. But the main trip that we were going on was the Brownsport group where I found um, some various fossils. So we stopped off at some various places, tried to collect a few fossils here and there. I found um, Astrea spongia, which is a type of fossilized or animal or fossil sponge. And so that, that is what it looks like. It's a sponge, and I've collected bags of these. They're very abundant in the brown sport group. Here's one you, are gonna, you can actually see with the spicules preserved very well. So those are the crisscross lines, are the spicules, which is made of uh, silica or um, quartz. They make up their, inver in their exoskeletons of quartz, and their spicules are made up of quartz. Sometimes they make, um, make up of calcium and calcium carbonate, but the most common mineral that is formed or that is found in these um, sponges are these sponge spicules, which is made up of quartz, um, silica, so silica dioxide. So we went there, we went to various places, collected the sponges, but the really cool part was we went to the Bob, Bob Limestone, which is a member of the Brownsport. And as I told you before about how to know or how to look at the various minerals in order to look at the um, environment or the ancient environments, 
You can do that the same with fossils as well, but I, I talked about in my later videos on identifying some of the various minerals and um, fossils in order to tell what kind of ancient environment you're in. And so if you look at this rock here, it looks very green. Um, it looks green. That's because of glauconite, which I told you in my later videos before. Glauconite is a silicate mineral that forms only in shallow marine deposits. And so the why the rock is green is because, or why this limestone is green, is because of the glauconite that was preserved along with the deposition of the limestones about um, 325, um, mil, uh, excuse me, 425 million years ago during the um, upper, upper Silurian, which is when Lockean to Predolian stage of the carbon of the Silurian period. And so right here, you can actually see, or right here, is the holdfast of a crinoid. And I thought these were quite rare to find, but at the brown sport, they're quite um, common in the brown sport. And this is from the Bob Limestone member of the brown sport group. I also found a, tri a few um, disarticulated trilobite remains. This is the biggest trilobite that I found. It was quite big. So that's the pygidium, or that's the tail end of a trilobite. And if you don't know what that actually looks like, or you know, if you're confused by that, here is a complete trilobite from Africa. And that is the bottom part of the bottom portion of a trilobite. So that is this here. That is the bottom portion, what we call the pygidium. Um, I also found some other disarticulated remains like the genal spines of the cephalon, which is this here. So that is the disarticulated remain of the genal spine of a trilobite. And if you don't know what that looks like, here is a complete specimen to really show you. Um, so here is the genal spine, which is this appendage that, um, that breaks off um, during the trilobite's molting cycle. And so that I did find. So I did find some disarticulated pygidiums and um, genal spines coming from trilobites. I found some beautiful remains of brachiopods as well, like leptatina. Here's a specimen from Leptatina. So that's a Leptatina brachiopod. And so you probably can't really see because the lighting may be a little bit bad, but you can see these square-like minerals that is pyrite. Um, this rock, again, is made from glauconite, but pyrite is an indication of the lack of oxygen, which is anaerobic, which means there's lacking oxygen in the environment. So if you find uh, pyrite crystals near or around rock units, when you're around or preserved in rock, sedimentary rocks, that would mean that your rock was deposited in a, uh, marine, in a marine environment lacking oxygen. So iron oxide and iron sulfide are great examples to show that your rock specimen was deposited, uh, deposited in a, um, a, a lack, lacking oxygen environment. So that was really cool to find and to really in order to really put your clues together on the ancient environment during the Silurian period as these rocks and fossils were being deposited. I also found some gastropods, which are snails. So that was really cool. That is a, um, plat a platystria. That is a gastropod, an ancient snail that lived during the Silurian period. Quite unique, quite a cool find. I found, um, this is probably the best specimen that I found and it's just sitting on that rock there. And it's got this spiral shape. Very, very pretty looking specimens. Again, this is probably the best specimen I, I actually found. So it was an absolute wonder. It was an absolutely great trip to actually going out and collecting fossils. Um, I hope to do it again sometime. I collected various fossils from the Carboniferous period of the Pennsylvanian, from the Mississippian, and then went out to Tennessee to collect Silurian and Ordovician fossils. Um, I posted a little bit of videos before of the uh, what the strata actually looked like and the brown sport group. It was really cool. It was actually just amazing to actually go and look at these layers. And me actually standing on top of these layers knowing that I'm actually standing on the bottom of an ancient ocean and the sediments were stacking up in order for me to actually just sit and stand on these sediments. So I'm actually standing on the bottom of an ancient ocean some 425 million years old. And I found the various fossils and the various animals communities that inhabited these ancient oceans 325 and 425 million years ago. So I will see you later with another video. This is Paleo 101.